Before I start the video proper, I want to thank Chris Pycone on Twitter for sending this video to me. Feel free to send me videos to respond to, at disappointed O. And also, Chris, why the hell do you send this? This was horrible! Hello my friends, this is Dan, a true Christian, coming back at you with another audio presentation. This one is called Kingdom of Moronica, if atheists have their own country. So, I write these videos while I'm watching them for the first time. And I'm only about 20 seconds into the original video as of writing this, and I can guarantee that this guy is going to bring up Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, and Communist China. I don't know why I feel that. Maybe I'm psychic. Genesis 13, verse 11. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. So there's a few seconds of Bible verses and stuff like this. I'm cutting it out in the interest of time. Amen. Once again, I'm going to go after atheist writer for the periodical American Atheist, Michael Polklovich, and one of his writings where he touts the praise of atheism and the glorious Christ-free nation he strives to see created. Sorry, in his case I meant to say evolve. I forgot, Michael considers himself a turd-throwing cousin of monkeys. Was that really necessary? I don't mean to nitpick here. Oh, I do. I love doing that. You see, the word create means to create something from nothing or from a bunch of pre-existing materials in a relatively short amount of time. And to evolve means to, you know, develop over a gradual period of time, usually from something much simpler. No, Eric Hovind, it does not just mean change. I can kind of see your train of thought on this, what with him wanting to have a better society develop over time and become more and more like his ideal, wanting it to evolve from what it is now. But I think that your use of social evolution to transition to a cheap shot about how he accepts biological evolution is kind of shaky. Also, I believe you misspoke. I believe you meant to say he believes himself to be a cousin of turd-throwing monkeys unless you're trying to imply that he has some sort of feces fetish. The title of his anti-Christian rant and rave is called Christo Slovakia, a thought experiment by Michael Polklovich. Once again, I'm going to expose this stupid atheist for the clueless moron hiding behind the curtain of sheepskin plaudettes of man in the wizard's throne room. If you didn't catch the reference from the 1939 Wizard of Oz, just a reminder. Any rational person who has actually read the Ten Commandments and ponders them for ten seconds realizes that over half are morally reprehensible, even unconstitutional in Canada and the United States. The mark of an idiot. Any person who ponders anything for 10 seconds and comes to a conclusion is an uneducated moron who refuses knowledge and lacks education. I actually agree with him here. Anyone that takes only 10 seconds to consider their position on something is kind of lazy. However, I wouldn't call them uneducated because plenty of educated people can be lazy. It appears that I have encountered someone as pedantic as me, someone who is refusing to recognize an embellishment for the sake of comedy. And also, I have a video series on the Ten Commandments, and trust me, I put more than ten seconds of thought into it, even though I should probably actually finish it. But I think it's pretty obvious that the point he was trying to make is that things like uh, don't take my name in vain and don't have any other gods but me are blatantly unconstitutional in the United States, seeing as they violate freedom of speech and religious freedom. And who makes morality exactly there, Michael? Man who's wicked and changes his mind constantly to slake his own wicked heart? Or God who changes not? Well, that's a very loaded question. I would say that humans aren't bad or good in general. I would say that humans are a lot more complicated. You see, humans aren't exactly the most adapted for a lone survivor lifestyle. That's why humans who could cooperate better with others survived. Even under a creationist worldview, this still actually, you know, makes sense. Because people who were unable to function in a society and were the most disruptive to their tribe or nation would be punished by banishment, incarceration, or execution. I mean, even Kent Hovind accepts this. He won this whole thing when he was still in jail about how we should genocide all the people with the mean gene. I think there is something in the genetic code that deals with the disposition toward uh, gentleness or meanness, and I think in God's perfect law, if we would continually eliminate, execute people that do see certain crimes, we would gradually get a much better society that people, not so many people, have this mean gene in them. 
See, people can be very selfless when it comes to their own tribe, nation, or their in-group, but they can be very selfish when it comes to the out-group. The reason this is is because the bad things they do to the out-group positively affect their in-group, making them believe that they're doing the right thing for their group. Th stuff like this combined with propaganda can be why a loving father and patriot can also be in favor of gassing the Jews. Over the past few centuries, nations have gotten bigger, making it so that we have more interdependent social groups. That combined with social movements dispelling propaganda about the various out-groups, making them more accepted, is why we today see all human life as valuable. What commandments are reprehensible to you, Michael? Thou shalt not kill? Thou shalt not steal? Thou shalt not commit adultery? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods or his wife? Thou shalt not bear false witness? Thou shalt honor thy mother and father? Oh, wait a minute. You mean keep the Sabbath? There is but one God. Don't take God's name in vain. But certainly, Michael, you hate every one of the commandments, because then you would have a moral society and not rape, pornography, street drugs, opioid abuse, drunk driving, and cities like San Francisco and Seattle that smell like urine from all the homeless people, among other problems. What the hell are you even trying to say, Dan? You seem to understand that he only has a problem with a few of the commandments, the ones that, you know, shit on. But you're also saying he wants a world with none of the commandments, and a world like that would have all those problems? Also, rules against murder and stealing aren't going to help with things like drunk driving and rape, since they're not in any way related. And the reason homeless people piss in the street is because they have nowhere else to do it. Why do you want, Michael? Can you imagine a nation founded on these calcified and theocratic notions of ethics and morality? Yeah, it wouldn't be the United States of Sodom, Michael. You wouldn't have gay pride parades, schools teaching children to be sex deviants, adults encouraging children to mutilate their bodies to become perverse non-gender freaks, rampant opioid overdoses, growing suicide rates among the young, school shootings, and rampant government corruption. But this is the country you want there, Michael. You want no rules. No laws and no restraints on anyone. Uh, no. He specifically said he didn't want to live in a theocracy. He never said he wanted there to be a nation without rules. Just because religions have a concept of rules, that doesn't mean that rules are a religious concept that can only be used by religion. A little kid throwing a temper tantrum because another kid is using a toy that he owns, even though it's one of several identical toys, is operating under the same logic as you. That logic being, I have this, therefore anyone who has anything like it stole it from me. Most people simply do not have a grasp on the immoral nature of the commandments. I propose to run through an experiment and model a nation founded on those commandments to see how it might play out. I have a grasp on the immoral nature of your dream country there, Michael. America has been getting worse ever since the late 1960s. Yeah, they should have never canceled Star Trek the original series. Every advancement for oppressed groups means nothing because of it. Also, I would like to contest that America has been getting worse since 2016, when they elected someone that I personally don't like. I mean, think about it. I liked Star Wars The Force Awakens. That came out in 2015. Then he got elected, and everyone hated The Last Jedi. See the connection here? And I mean, my perspective is the objectively right one here, and anyone who is disagreeing with me is just an immoral idiot who doesn't understand why I am right. And every generation since the World War II generation has gotten more perverse and mentally sickened as their belief in God has decreased. Now we have the millennials committing suicide and darwining themselves out of existence at a rate this country has never seen before. See this right here? This is you right now. Also, have you ever considered the idea that maybe the reason people are depressed is because they realize they can never achieve their goals? Because they're working minimum wage jobs at a coffee shop while holding an advanced degree? Because... No one can trust the news now, because Nazis are a thing again, because people think the earth is flat and all that. Nope, must be that damn lack of Jesus that's making everyone so depressed. I don't need to run an experiment on a nation following after atheists. America provides enough entertainment to make a movie theater go broke. But I'm not surprised, nor am I worried. I have an advanced copy of the America is Doomed and Damned movie script. You know, I have to agree with him again on this one. America is fucked, even though we kind of disagree on why. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water below. Exodus 20, verse 4. But what about the ubiguous crucifix, or quite recently, the popular sculpture of those very Ten Commandments that Alabama's Chief Justice Roy Moore 
was ordered to remove from his courthouse. Here we discover a man of God who reveres a graven image that itself declares such graven images forbidden. I think William Shatner said it best in Airplane 2. I guess irony can be pretty ironic sometimes. Let's look specifically at Exodus 20 and verse 1. Exodus 20 and verse 1. And God spake all these things, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto any any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or is in the earth beneath, or is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Did you notice that Michael left out verse 5? And does he understand that this commandment applies to living and non-living objects, such as birds, bulls, snakes, trees, rocks, fish, sharks, cows, and people made to look like sick hybrid creatures from a furry comic convention. Please don't talk about furries and cosplayers as if they are the same thing. Furries are people with a very odd fetish. Cosplayers are just people who want to dress up as their favorite fictional character without getting mocked for it. And also that whole graven images idea from Michael was kind of weak seeing as most Christians today just kind of ignore it. God specifically states, you shall not bow down to them and worship them. Like Sodomite America worships rock and roll singers, movie actors, NFL players, TV shows, and gets very angry when you point out how deviant and wicked some of their precious false gods are. No, we do not worship celebrities as gods. Sorry about this. Quick post-production note I wanted to make. Yes, there are some people who joking really refer to people like Gabe Newell as Lord Gaben or something like that. May he bless us with steam summer sales and all that. But that's mainly kind of a joke, you know, kind of all for the lols and such. I know the phrase celebrity worship exists, but that just refers to an unhealthy obsession with a specific celebrity. And I'm pretty sure the reason that we don't like it when celebrities do shitty things is one, because they're shitty things to do, and B, because we enjoy their acting, their sports things, their music, and stuff like that, and have fond memories of them and don't want those fond memories associated with something shitty like wife beating. Gods are. Once again, Michael, that's your country, my friend. And just so we're clear, Michael, you're Sodom Tiki Idols of America. Okay, just fuck this shit. I am out. America is a predominantly Christian nation. Secular nations tend to be better places to live by any objective standard. Religiously controlled nations tend to be pretty shitty and violate human rights, okay? America may have some problems, but holy crap, this guy is just taking things that aren't even issues and making them into issues while ignoring the real things. He gets a few issues right, but that's it. I can't deal with this anymore. I, if you want me to make a second part to this video and do the rest of it, maybe I will in a couple of months, okay? If you want to donate to my Patreon, check me out there, link in the description, follow me on Twitter at Disappointed O, all that stuff. I cannot deal with this guy, he is a lunatic. <laughs>